Morning ladies. I am coming to you from the car today. Um, if I look a little puffy, it's cause it's negative one here in Minnesota. I actually ditched my video for this week. I had it all set to go and then I just kind of felt like I don't really want to talk about this that this week. I, I really just have some thoughts that I wanted to share with you and they're more casual in nature. Picture this more of a chat. Um, I just dropped my kids off at homeschool co-op, which is what I do on Thursdays. And then I usually spend some time with clients and running errands and talking to you all. Um, but I just wanted to like share some thoughts on rest and intentional rest because we just got back from a vacation, which was so awesome. We went to South Padre Island, Texas, and we got to bring the dog. <laughs> so those of you who know Ginger and our obsession with Ginger the puppy, um, she joined us. I don't think my husband would have made it without her actually. Um, we had a wonderful time and it was a really extended rest and lo a longer trip than we had ever taken. And it was something that we had planned a really long time ago. So it felt a little weird to go on vacation um, as my husband is still looking for a new position. But, you know, honestly, it felt also like this oasis of rest and a gift in the middle of a really stressful season or kind of coming out of a stressful season. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience of like what it was like to actually try to rest in that experience. Because honestly, like, I was so excited for this extended time, but what I encountered actually was kind of telling. And I wondered if any of you have ever experienced this where, you know, as I found myself not doing a lot or not doing enough, according to who, I don't know, um, I found myself really struggling to embrace the rest. And I actually found myself kind of feeling really guilty. And my husband and I talked about it and he was like, I'm like really struggling with doing nothing. <laughs> and I was like, me too. And it brought me back to like my teenage years where I remember reading this book right when I started therapy. And I honestly don't know if I can recommend it anymore because it's been so long since I read it, but the title's very catchy. It was when I relax, I feel guilty. And I, I kind of hearkened back to that book and I was like, you know, I think it is kind of that personality type, like that type A doer personality that struggles with feeling worthy, even in the midst of rest. I just wanted to share like when I was able to actually get into it, you know, like we had a really lovely time and the weather was really cold. So we ended up not doing a whole lot um, at for the first week that we were there. We were there for just a little over a week. And so there were a lot of Monopoly games. There were a lot of tears. <laughs> there was a lot of character building for all. <laughs> um, but it was really, really good time to just ask the Lord, like, what are you up to in this? And why am I feeling this resistance in my heart? And my favorite question that I've told you guys before is, Jesus, what do you want me to know about this? And so I was asking him that question and the Lord just kind of reminded me that in resting, I will actually find more of my purpose. And, and that is actually what ended up happening, even though I felt like it was a fight to actually relax. I don't know if any of you can relate to this. Like, raise your hand if you're like the type A doer type. It was really hard to force myself to rest and to really just live in the moment. I think so much of my daily life, and I bet yours too, is just planning ahead, meal planning. Who's, you know, who do I need to bring to the next thing? You know, what am I doing for work? What does this client need? What about YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff? It's just life is so full and I'm always having to think ahead, of course, to stay on top of it all. And I think what this vacation allowed me to do was really feel what it's like to be completely present in the moment and to release all of that pressure. And it was just so refreshing. So as I was able to do that, I actually found like, I don't know if you guys feel like you carry stress in your body, but I could actually physically feel like some of the stress leaving my body. And I felt like the Lord was saying to me like, Hey, you guys have had a stressful six months. We've had various things that have come along that just felt like trials and, and difficulties. And I think I was really carrying that in my body. 
if you haven't read The Body Keeps the Score, just add that to your list. Um, but it was so telling that I resisted it. And the Lord wanted me to know that I was just as worthy when I was resting as I am when I'm productive. And I think that that, as basic as that sounds, I mean, this is like self-worth 101. I just want you to know that I'm a therapist and I'm still working through it. I think so much of our identity, especially if we were raised in a performance-based family, is around the doing and not necessarily the being. And we just really connected. So it, it took a little bit for me to realize like, oh, my goal on this vacation is to connect with God and connect with my family, which is what this whole channel is about, ironically. <laughs> but I just want you to know like, hey, I'm here doing it too. Like it took real work to just be in the moment, to just be. And the Lord said to me, um, as I was praying one morning, I actually had the opportunity to walk Ginger all the way to the ocean every morning. And it was so fun. And my kids slept so late. Are any of you in those glorious years where the kids are starting to sleep in? They go to bed late, so I don't have like the evening time, but I definitely have the morning time. And it is like just glorious. It's just so lovely to be here. Um, so I would walk the dog and I would listen to my Bible recap devotional. And I just realized like, wow, just being present with God was just a gift. And then being able to just enter the day with the goal of just like, let's just see what happens. We'll just connect. The goal is connection. And that is how I would love to live every day of my life. And of course, we can't all be on vacation all the time. So the trick is, how can I keep that going, right? Like when I get home here in the midst of the busyness, how can connection remain one of my primary goals, if not the primary goal? Um, anyway, I just want you to know, I guess this is your takeaway for today, your little car chat with me. Just how can we embrace the truth that our self-worth has nothing to do with our productivity? How can we release accomplishment and achievement and just be with God and with our families and know that that's enough? And I think that actually it calls for embracing the eternal mindset. I think God calls us to a completely different way of thinking. And I think it's just countercultural. And I think it's totally hard to do all the time. But one thing that I'm working on is having that kingdom mindset where it's like, I'm just going to look at this from God's perspective. And from God's perspective, this time of rest, it was actually a forced rest. That's what God told me it was. Kind of an oasis in a desert because he's revitalizing us for the next thing, whatever that might be. And for us to totally embrace those oasises. Is that a word? Oases? Anyone know the plural of oasis? <laughs> Anyway, those embrace those times of forced rest along the way and to not fight it because of striving or insecurities about our own self-worth. We matter and our hearts need rest. We can say these things, but to truly embrace that we have worth and value outside of what we do is the challenge outside of how much I get done with my to-do list. I really feel like sometimes I have to dethrone that to-do list, like it becomes an idol in my life. And so I just want to encourage you, if you have a time of rest, and maybe it's not a formal vacation, maybe it's a Saturday morning to yourself, but to really bring it to God and be like, Lord, how can I embrace this time of rest and not fight it? You know, to know that I, that you're bringing this to me for a season of refreshment, whether that's an hour or a day or a vacation. And here's what really happened. So like by the time that first week was hard, like I fought it for that first week. and I think my husband did too. But then the second week, I really started to feel like this propulsion forward. It was almost like I had, do you know how you feel like after you get up from a really long nap, you feel revitalized? It was like that, but just like bigger, longer. And so all this stress just rolled off in that first week. And then for those remaining days, I just felt like I was looking forward and I was looking ahead. And I felt like this time of rest actually caused the limitations to be removed from me. And that was a completely new experience for me. Apparently, I haven't taken long enough vacations. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll get right on that. But I wanted to just say, like, to trust the process because out of this vacation came a lot of, like, insight and a removal of 
unhelpful mindsets. I feel like Jesus and I got some time to like dig into some of the fears that I have or ways that I've been holding back, you know, in life, whether it's like with my personal goals or even with this channel. I feel like there are just different areas of my heart that he kind of came after, but he wouldn't have been able to reach them if we hadn't had that time of rest beforehand. And so I just want you to know that you're worth it. You're worth it regardless of your to-do list. You are worthy regardless of your to-do list. Rest and self-worth, they go hand in hand. I don't know if I really got that before this vacation, but to really embrace rest, that is my encouragement to you today. And that if you trust that process, you absolutely will make it to the part where you feel that restoration of motivation. And, but it doesn't mean that you're any better if we do more, right? It doesn't mean that. And so that's my encouragement to you. A little car chat today. And we'll be just continuing to talk about really amazing things here. And blessings on your week ahead.